wait up to the plane take off. I didn't want to. I felt as upset. Can't stand the thought of me being here and my mum being over in Japan. I'll be able to see her for at least a year. Oh, don't be soft. She'll be able to phone you, won't she? I know, but it's not like I can just pop over for a few hours when I feel like it. G'day. Oh, my God, look at the Stacey you. It's Nelly's inside, you know. Yeah, sorry, I was bushed last night's show as a killer. Did you see your mum off, Katie? Yeah. It's a hell of a trip, you know. Almost as far as from here to Oz. Listen, I'm sorry. I don't think he meant to rub it in. No, it's OK. Listen, Jack, I'm sorry about kicking off on you the other day. I'm... Well, I'm just tired because of the panto. It's OK. We were just worried about you, that's all. I don't think you should push yourself too hard. I won't. Hey, you've got a spot there. I haven't, have I? Oh, don't panic. It's quite normal. Even I get them. You don't have to go back to the office just yet, do you? I thought you were setting up the new tally. I can do that later. Won't take long. I thought we could, uh, you know, spend a bit of time together now that we've got the house to ourselves. Your mum's gone out with Kylie. Not now. Come on, Linz. We've hardly touched each other in weeks. Every time I come near you, you seem to run a mile. What's wrong? It just doesn't feel right. And why? Well, it's not our house, is it? Yeah, you wouldn't have minded at one point. Oh, please, Gary, not now. I just want to get back together properly, Linz. I just want us to be like we were before we split up. Don't you want that? Well, yeah, but... Not here and not now. Why won't you give me a chance, eh? I just don't like you pushing me like this. I don't mean to push. I just want to... just want to be like we were. Well, not here. We'll soon have a place of our own. Just like we always wanted. Just like we dreamt about. Come on. You haven't gone off me that much, have you? No. Then why don't we try and get things back to normal? Till some other time. Oh, we used to be so good together, Liz. I just want to be like that again. That's all I want. OK, I'll get my mum to phone you. OK, then, thanks. Bye. That's weird. Uncle Billy says my dad's not down there in Basingstoke. Did he tell you he was going anywhere else? Uh, not me, no. Hey, hey yeah. Hey, yeah. hey babe. Is he? <laughs> mum, Uncle Billy's just been on the phone. He says my dad's not down there with them. Do you think he's all right? I mean, that's where he said he was going, wasn't it? Yeah, I know, but um, he did say something about uh, having to see someone in Birmingham. Something about uh, setting up a parcel service, I think. That's where he'll be. Oh, uh, yeah, he uh, mentioned that to me and all. Oh, well, I wish he'd hurry up and come back. We need him at the office. Right. I had better go. Do you want to take this upstairs? <laughs> see you later, Kyles. Take your hat off. Ta. <laughs> I, I shall see you later, Mum. To Right. Yeah, Bye. Bye. See ya. Uh, this remote needs some new batteries. I'll just nip out and get them, eh? How many more lies am I going to have to tell her? Why did you get involved in this? Can't you see what it's doing to this family? We're doing all right, aren't we? Doing all right? Is me having to lie to my own daughter doing all right? Is having my husband in Holland buying drugs doing all right? We've had the police in ransacking the house for drugs and there could be another raid any minute. Is that doing all right? I can't stand much more of this. I have to shove it. It's bad enough me being married to a drug stealer. Can you imagine how that feels, eh? The man you've shared your life with for 20 odd years, selling drugs, wrecking people's lives, and now my own daughter's involved. Even my own granddaughter! I'm doing it for them. Look at me. I left school 10 years ago, and what have I got? What have I been able to give Lindsay and my little girl? We haven't even got our own place to live. 
You get there eventually. You've got your taxi wig. There was no need to get involved with drugs. Any more than a taxi job, Jackie. I've got ambitions, like your Jimmy. All the jobs I've had, all the ideas, no one's been prepared to back me up with the money. No one to take the risk. Well, now I'm getting my own money. I know it mightn't last, but I'm going for it while I can. And then when I've got the money I need, I'm gonna have my own little business, backing people like me with ideas. And then I can have a proper future for me, Linz, and the baby. And what about other people's futures? I'm doing this for me. And what about our Kylie? What if she ends up on drugs? She won't. Well, that's very easy for you to say that, but while people like you and Jimmy are selling the stuff, kids like your own daughter could end up being hooked on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can manage that. Give us an hour, eh? Cheers. Bye-bye. When I first saw you, I thought you were a real big head, you know. What, full of myself, you mean? Yeah, but I'm not so sure now. You're great with Leo and them kids. Well, you've got to look after the kids. They're the ones who pay me wages. And I think my dad quite likes you as well, which isn't like him. Hmm. Just as well, because I think I quite like his daughter. Oh, you think you quite like me, eh? Well, maybe a bit more than that. I thought you couldn't get enough of me. Actually, uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, I think I've fallen for you big time. Big time? Oh, come on, give us a break, Jack. I mean it. Well, not Andy, because I think I might have fallen for you. So you'll come to Australia with me when the show's over? What? Well, just as a holiday. God, yeah. <laughs> I don't want us to lose touch, Jack. Do you? All right, mate. What are you doing there? Oh, uh, Bev's gone with me dad for this checkup. All right. Have you seen Sipper about? I haven't, no, sorry. I'll kill him when I see him. He arranges to meet me for a dinner time jog and then there's a bunk on me. Oh, why don't you try the back room at the spawn? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, my dad told me to tell you that thing he wants to be here tomorrow. Oh, brilliant. Thanks. Listen, uh, Friday night at ours, having a surprise birthday party for that sky and little swine who shares the house with me. Oh, nice. How old is he? 39. Well, why don't you just wait a year and go for the big four, though? To tell you the truth, it was our Gemma who came up with the idea. She wants me to invite all the kids as well. So somebody will be made up, won't he? Being a big kid himself. So do you fancy it? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind, eh? Nice one. I'm trying to get as many locals here as I can. So bring your camcorder. I can't wait to see the look on his face when we spring this surprise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you two have met. This is um, Jackie Cockle's daughter, Lindsay. This is Mick from Number 5, runs the pizza parlor. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've seen you around. Listen, I was just telling Mike, we're having a surprise birthday party for my mate at ours on Friday. So why don't you and your fella and your little girl come along? Ah, Gemma wants all the kids on the close day, you know. <sighs> oh, I... Well, Mix asked me to bring me camcorders, so... Yeah, all right, sounds great, thanks. Great. So don't forget, Friday night. And, hey, put a word to Simbad. Cheers, mate. Hey, listen, Mike, uh, if you want to bring your girlfriend... I... I haven't got one, mate. I know the feeling. See you later. You all right? Yeah. No. I just don't know what to do about Gary. He keeps... So nice to me. But all I can think about is you, Mike. I just don't know what to do. What are we going to do? I don't know what to do with that. Where are we going? Somewhere we can talk in private. Oh, does someone see us? They won't. What's wrong? My mum left us on our own at dinner time and he pushed me into going to bed with him. What, you mean he raped you or something? No, it wasn't like that. He was dead nice. But I tried to tell him I didn't want to, to go along with it. I didn't want him to get suspicious. I wanted it to be you, Mike. I just want you.
Come on, you two. Oh, I just wish there was somewhere we could go. Oh. It's got to be soon, mate. I just want you. I'm never going near Carrie again, ever. Do you really mean that? Oh, you're all I want. I'll find her somewhere. I promise you. Oh. God, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't realise. Got to go. Oh, sorry, Mike, but there was no one out there saving. Is anyone there? Mike? What's going on? Look, I tell you, don't say anything, please. Oh, yeah. Right, you can go and play now. Do you want something to eat now, Ed, or is it a bit early? Oh, you going out? Well, I was thinking about it, but I'm not so sure now it's come to the crunch. I was going to go along to one of those Gammonon meetings, you know. With Rosie, has she changed her mind? No such luck, love. No, this is a support group for friends and relatives of gamblers. The idea is to help you understand what they're doing, like. Oh, well, it's a start, isn't it? But she won't go for help. Yeah, but having to tell a load of strangers that your own wife almost bankrupted you, your marriage is on the rocks. You never know. It could be easier than talking to people, you know. I don't even know why I'm bothering, to be honest. It's her that's up, not me. Why can't she shift herself and do something to help? <sighs> Maybe I could leave it till next week. No, no, don't do that. You said Rosie's done nothing. Don't be like her. Go to the meeting. Mm, I don't know. I feel a bit stupid going on with Todd. I could come with you. Would that help? Are you serious? Mm, why not? I'm a relative. What are you sure, like? We'll have to take Becca with us. Yeah, that's OK. Ah, oh, look, love. I'm really grateful about this. Thanks. Yeah, but I asked you to mind the shop, didn't I? All sorts could have come in. Yeah, yeah, OK, I'll see you later. So, uh, will you and Ron be able to come, then? I think so. And you're Josh as well. Gemma's got it into her that she wants all the kids to stay over for the night. What, like a pyjama party? <laughs> yeah, and Leo want me to invite Jackie's new boyfriend, this Greg Brady character. What do you think? Little Gemma got her eye on him, has she? Yeah, but only for autographs and photos to bargain with at school, you know. I don't know what to do, though, Bev. I mean, it's not like the kind of dude that he's used to. Hey, don't worry about him. He's a lovely fella. No edge to him. I think he's got a lovely voice. Oh, just for you, don't I? Eh, hey, I prefer the more mature man. <laughs> so, then, what do you think? What is it? It's the centrepiece of my Valentine display. I'm going to have chocolates, cards, the lot. I'm even thinking of having one of those single nights, you know, like they do in the big supermarkets. Isn't it a bit early? Valentine's Day's ages off yet. My Ron says you can never be too early. I'm getting me Easter eggs this week. Oh. All right, Mick. All right, Ron. Hello, dear. Just checking what you wanted for tea. What's all this? That, that's a centrepiece for a Valentine's Day promotion. It's a bit early for that, isn't it? Hey, Dicko. You've retired. I'm in charge of these things now. Anything you say, my sweet? <laughs> Sorry, the check-up going on. Fabulous, mate. No worries. He's having his, uh, what are they called? Uh, cardiac rehabilitation course. Next week, it's all about health, fitness, diet, that kind of thing. All oh, right. So I'd expect to see you jogging with me and Simba, didn't he? He's not quite ready for that, yeah. Well, listen, any time you fancy a workout, get over to our garage. I'm thinking of setting up a little mini gym, you know. How is that where you wanted me uh, to get uh, that? It's a surprise from your weight, mate. Not a word to somebody to get at the party. Ah. What's this? Uh, I won't tell. Not a word, they run. Not a word. Bev, have you got any of those birthday cake candles? Yes, mate. They should be in a box under the counter. Hey, you dicko. You've retired. This is my shop now. How could I forget? <laughs> Teddy! Teddy. Um, I've knocked at yours twice. I need to talk to you. Why? Why is that? Um, earlier on in the shop, I could have died. You won't tell anyone, will you? Oh, stop panicking. I won't say anything. Well, it's not like it seems. I think I've got the picture, Mike. Isn't she Jimmy Corkin's daughter? That's right, yeah. Well, she's married, isn't she? Oh, for God's sake, Terry, please don't say anything. I just don't you know what you're doing. Well, it's not as if I'm breaking her and her husband up. The marriage is over. But it's just what to do. I mean, I'm fed up of having to see her on the quiet. Yeah, well, I don't think your old fella's stock room is exactly the right place, is it? I know that's mad, yeah, but what else can we do? Is it serious, then? Yeah. Yeah, it is, but... 
It's killing me. I mean, I, we don't even get the chance to speak to each other properly. Well, if it's a bit of space you're looking for for yourselves, well, you can always use my flat. Are you serious? Yeah, life's too short, so if you want to use it, you're welcome. I'm at the club most of the time. Why are you so cool about it? Well, because I've spent most of my life doing what other people wanted me to do, when I should have gone for what I wanted to do, so I know how you're feeling. So how about tomorrow night? I'll be out after about seven. Cheers, Teddy, that is brilliant. We'll be there. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow. Ta-da. Right, right. Yeah, Nick, hey. You haven't seen Sarah in about, have you? I knocked before, but I couldn't get any answer. Trying to worm your way into the flat without me knowing, eh, Sullivan? No, I just wanted to see it about some decorating, that's all. Oh, that's a new one. Well, I'm a landlord, and it's just about time her place would have been done up a bit. I mean, a single mum and all that, you probably can't afford it. Especially with the money you pay her. Oh, well, I'm sorry, mate. She went up with her father-in-law earlier. Shame then, isn't it? Oh, right. Well, maybe I'll call back later, eh? Listen, Tiz, does this mean that me and Simba will get a refund, then? Because we've just decorated our place, and we're tenants just like Sarah. Yeah, I know, but... No wonder she said you're a nice fella. Th did she? I think you've stuck a chord there, Tess. So what do you think about her? Uh, I don't know. She seems all right. Just all right? Yeah, I'll see you later, all right. See you later. <laughs> Look, man, I don't want you coming here. I mean, what if someone sees you? The papers would have a field day. OK, OK, point taken. But how was it? The freebie? Yeah, it was OK. Good. I thought I'd bring you a little more. And Jimmy told me to look after you. It's as good as the last lot. How about money? Oh, we can sort it out another time, eh? Listen, I'm on stage in a few minutes. You better go. Uh, I gave you my mobile number the other day, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, I've got that. Ring any time. I've never had anyone famous ringing me up. <laughs> I've got to get on. Like Jimmy said, anything you want, you're a priority customer. Just think, flat to ourselves for the whole evening. Can you get out? I don't know. Oh, God, I want him. What about my mum and Gary? I'm scared, mate. Isn't it better than just looking at each other across the coast and waiting to sneak out? Of course it is. Are you sure he won't tell anyone? No, he's on our side, I can tell. Oh, go on then, tell me you'll be able to make it. I still can't believe it. I suppose I've got to, haven't I? Anyway, you might hate me when you get me on my own. You might hate me. Don't be soft. It's too good a chance to miss. Just try and make it a... Any time after seven, he said. I'll be there. I couldn't believe it when that woman said she was a baker's wife. <laughs> well, at least Rosie didn't run off to a casino with the money from the collection plate. <laughs> we should be okay. Yeah, I'll put us to bed in a minute. Uh, Do you think it was any use going? I don't know. I suppose it makes you realise you're not the only family with problems. There's always someone worse off than you are. <laughs> What's up with you? Your face when that woman asked if we were married. <sighs> yeah, well, I don't know what gave her that idea. I mean, <laughs> there's nearly 20 years between us. Well, it's only the same as Ron Dixon and Bev. He's years older than she is, but they look like a real couple. Mm, I suppose so. I get it. Hiya. Uh, is it all right if I come in? Yeah, sure. All right, Ed. All right, Terry. Uh, sorry to bother you so late. I couldn't get you before. It's about the flat. Uh, there's no problem, is there? Oh, no, it's just that the flat could do with decorating, and I was wondering if we could make a start in here. Oh, yeah, the uh, place could do with a bit of sprucing up, couldn't it, love? Yeah, great. Well, when are you sending the decorators round? I was thinking of doing it myself, actually. I, I used to like doing a bit of the old DIY. Uh, I, uh, I thought you had a club to run. Yeah, I might own everything now, but that more or less runs itself. I can start tomorrow if it's OK. Uh, no, there's no need there. You just uh, get the paint and stuff and I'll do it for you. Oh, no, no, it's all right. It's no problem. I'd like to do it. Right, so I'll get you some sample books and you can pick what paper you want. Yeah, all right. Thanks very much. See ya. 
See ya. Oh, isn't that great? Nice new paint and wallpaper, all free. Yeah, well, I can do it for you, you know that. You've got enough to do it your own way. Yeah, but I'm not so sure you should be letting him up here. I mean, uh, he went off his head a year ago, you know. Mm, Mick did tell me about that. Mind you, it's not surprising after what he went through, losing his wife and his little boy. Anyway, he seems fine now. Yeah, but you don't know that, do you? Not for sure. <laughs> You're carrying on like he's some mad axeman or something. <laughs> I think he's really nice. Finished? Yeah, another day, another dollar. Listen, I hope you don't mind, but I've asked Katie to call in. She's a bit down with her mum going away, and like, I said we could go for the Chinese. Oh. It might cheer it up. Oh, I'm a bit tired, Jack. Oh, I'm... please. Come in. Um, look, about that meal, if you don't mind, I think I'll go home. Oh, no, come on, it'll be good. Oh, I feel really tired, sorry. Well, listen, why don't you two go and get a takeaway? We'll eat it here. Thanks, but I think I'd sooner get home. I'll see you later. Nice. Yeah, see ya. Night, Katie. Well, looks like it's just the two of us then. Where should we go? Listen, uh, why don't we get that takeaway here, you know, just the two of us. No autographs to sign, no waiters fussing. Tell you what, you pop out and get it while I get changed. Yeah, okay. See you in a minute. Right. Ciao. Where's Hollins? Where you should be out working, doing an honest job. Where have you been? Uh, maybe you'd better get round there and give it a hand, eh? Might be an idea. Don't you want to watch the new telly? It's all set up. I told you. I don't want a telly bought with dishonest money. Haven't you listened to a word I've said? <sighs> I've been a fool staying here knowing what's going on, Gaddy. But I'm trapped. I can't go. Not when I don't know where Jimmy is, whether he's been beaten up or, or, or arrested or worse. But you're not trapped, Gary. All Lindsay doesn't know. Why don't you give up this drug dealing, eh? Before she does. Before she ends up like me. You know why I'm doing it? I'm doing it for Lindsay and Kylie and our future. Drug dealing isn't a future, love. Not for you and not for my daughter. I don't want this, Gary. I don't want history repeating itself. I'm not gonna let our Lindsay end up like me. One Good Cop is on ITV shortly. Here on 4 Next, the life and death decisions facing two pregnant women with cervical cancer in a new series that reveals how advances in medicine are forcing people to make ethical decisions. Lins, I was thinking, if we get Charlie to mind the office tonight, we can go out together. I can't, Jim. I'm going to Kelly for a drink tonight, and I promised her. All right, you can put her off, can't you? No, I promised her. And I let her down last week. Go on, we could go out for a meal and on to a club or something. We can't be affording to go for meals. Of course we can afford it. Well, you know, go out for a drink, then. No. 
Not tonight. I haven't seen Kelly in ages, and it's better if your mind's in the office. Charlie will only make a mess of things. OK, then. Um, well, let us know what time you're going into town, and I'll run you in. See ya. See ya. What's wrong? I'm going out with me mates for a drink. I don't need him fussing around offering me lips. Things no better between you two? I don't know, Mum. It's just not working. Yeah, yeah, I know the place. Yeah. Well, can't you make it a bit sooner, mate? Yeah, yeah, right, mate. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Who was on the phone? I was just ringing the box office. I forgot I had to have a couple of tickets waiting for someone for tonight's show. <laughs> Sorry, I should have asked you. You don't want me to fix any tickets for anyone, do you? Hey, I've seen enough of you and them minty tights, thanks. <laughs> Oh, mind you, my dad, Bev, and our Josh haven't seen it yet. Could you get them some? Yeah, yeah, I'll sort it out later. Listen, I've got a shoot. Oh, I'd have to go. I've come over some dinner. Mm -hmm. Sorry. A few more minutes won't matter, will it? Oh, hi, your love. Oh, uh, all right, Jackie. I thought you'd be at the shop. Yeah, I'm just on my way back now. Bossy Bev hasn't sent you to drag me back from my dinner, has she? Uh, no, I, erm... Um... Well, no, it's not important. It's um, just about the video. What, the one you lent for our Kylie? Hasn't she passed it back? No, no, no. The video I did, I, um, I, I just wondered if she'd heard anything from the ad agency. You left her Oh, uh, no, no, it's not important. If you're so busy, I'll just see her another time. No, you're all right, love. Linz, Mike Dixon's here to see you. I've got to get off anyway. Linz! OK. Listen, love, have you heard anything about the telly advert Mike wants to know? No, I haven't heard a thing. Oh, probably a complete waste of time. <laughs> See you, love. Draw me. See you, love. What are you doing coming here? I didn't know your mum would be here, did I? I thought you'd be on your own. So you still okay for tonight? I've told Gary I'm meeting one of my mates. He wants me to go out with him. Are you joking? Oh, it's all right. I'll probably be able to make it. Right, okay. I'll tell Terry we'll be there any time after half seven. Good about it. Time on our own at last. Yeah, I know. Hiya, is Rachel in? Oh, sorry, she's at work. It's a day off, isn't it? Well, she's not here. Maybe she's going to see Sinbad. Yeah, I've just seen Sinbad around the shops. Oh, can't help you then, sorry. Can I come in and wait for a bit? Well... No, just, just for ten minutes, see if she comes back here. Yeah, I suppose so. Doing? Making a cake for Sinbad's birthday. Next time, a surprise party for him. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. Leo invited me. Did he invite you? Mickey invited me. Is Rachel invited? I don't know. Yeah, do you want me to do that for you? You? I am good at cooking. I did domestic science for a year. Okay, go on then. The new man, eh? Do you bake your own bread and all? Rachel's changed, hasn't she? In what way? Well, she doesn't want to know her old mates anymore. Last week, I asked her to go to the pictures and she didn't even turn up. She was out with your mate, Jackie. Mm, looks like we're two of a kind then, doesn't it? Do you reckon? Yeah, well, I haven't had much of a social life since the panto started. Really? Yeah, I think this can go in now. Yeah, I'll put it in for you. Well, thanks. I'm glad you were going to the party, actually. I thought it'd just be little kids in oldies, but I'll feel better if there's someone my own age. You what? Oh, I feel better if there's someone your own age to talk to, you know, like you. I'm at least three years older than you, still at school. Well, three years isn't that much. Not really. Can I stay and wait for you to cook? Oh, I, I don't think Rachel's going to be back. I'm not bothered about it. Just enjoying myself helping you. That's not bad. I like the swirly bits. It's not too expensive, is it? Oh, don't worry about that. Oh, great. Well, it's either that or the blue one, I'm not sure. Well, there's no rush. You can make your mind up later. I'll get the paper tomorrow. Oh, and don't forget to get your Becca to pick some paper for the room as well. You're doing the half flags? Yeah, but don't tell Bev, otherwise she'll want the trading post and look like Aaron's. Mm, not a word. If she had her way, she'd have gold-plated door handles at my expense. Mm, you better sneak into mine through the back then so she doesn't see the flash paper <laughs> me and our Becca get. So was it all right if I start stripping the walls tonight if I was half seven? Tonight? Yeah, well, I wanted to get going on it because evening's the best, you see, because I have to be at the club during the daytimes for deliveries. 
Yeah, yeah, all right, as long as you don't mind me, Becca, and adding under your fees. Oh, no, great. You can be on tea duty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Teddy, can I have a quick word, please? Oh, yeah, are we still alive for tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, when you like it, you better take this, haven't you? In case I call in the club later. Nice one. Uh, see you later. And there, uh, listen, we really appreciate this, okay? Yeah, all right. Uh, see ya. Is, uh, is Mike helping you with the wallpaper? No, uh, he, he's doing me a favour. I've got a bit of a problem with my video, so he's going to have a look at it for me. Never seen anyone get so excited about fixing a video. <laughs> I, uh, just called in to see our Lee. I thought you'd still be awake. Well, he hasn't come back from school yet. Oh. I, well, I was just gonna put the kettle on. Do you want a coffee? No, thanks. Lee won't be long. Have a coffee. No, you're not. <sighs> How about you, anyway? How you doing? You mean I must still go in the bingo? Can't really afford to at the moment. Sure about that? Honest, Ed, it's the truth. I went to a meeting at Gamma Non last night. It's associated with Gamblers Anonymous only for people like me. People with uh, gambling addicts in their family. So, uh, why did you go there? Why do you think? To try and find out how I can help you. Why don't you come and see what it's all about? I've told you. I don't need all that. I can deal with it myself. But it might help. Even I can understand it all a bit more now. There were people there telling us things about what their husbands and wives had done. Lying, thieving, things you just wouldn't believe. Suppose you got up and told them all about me, did you? Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I learned something, Rose. I learned that getting hooked on gambling is someone's way of covering up other problems. Deeper problems. I even understand why you stole from the Farnham's restaurant. Why don't you just give it a try? I've told you, I don't need all that. Maybe. Maybe if you come back, you could help me. Be better that way. I'm sorry, Rosie. No. I won't come back until you've got a proper grip of yourself, found help, and stopped gambling. Why do you have to be so hard on me? I'm not being hard, love. I'm being practical. If you won't help yourself, no one else can. Look, I'm going to have to get off. Uh, tell Ali I was looking for me. See? Don't open the door. It'll flop in the middle. What do you think you say, Delia? Is this spot cream yours? It's Jackie's. I thought it was yours. A red cracker just there on your cheek. Very funny. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. So you've got a bit of a spot. It's normal, isn't it? Suppose you never get any. I wish. We well, are lucky dad's over there. Why don't you go and see him? Nah, I'd soon stay away from him and my mum for the time being. Why? Look, he's gone now. Listen, even if... Even... Even if they're not together, it doesn't mean you shouldn't get on with them. Well, I just don't want to get dragged into one of their arguments. I've had enough of it. Is it true what happened at Max Farnham's restaurant? How do you know about that? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned it. Uh, it's all right. I don't mind talking about it to you. Yeah, it's true, that's why my dad went. But she's not been well, my mum. She had an operation and it went wrong. I don't think she knew what she was doing. Look, why didn't you go home and see her? We haven't finished tidying up here yet. Don't you want me to help? As soon as you went home and saw your mum. I mean, she must be feeling really down at the moment. And she's not going to want you acting like some big kid avoiding her and your dad, is she? Well, can I come back after and see the cake? Yeah, I suppose so. Great. Right then, I'll see you later then. See you, Katie. Yeah, see ya. Is there something wrong, love? No. You're usually raring to go when you're going out with your mates. Why is there none of your dance music playing in here? It's Gary. I don't know if I should just call her off with Kelly and go out with Gary tonight. Don't go letting your mates down, Linz. You and Gary can go out any time. Look, love, 
If you don't think there's a future with you and Gary, isn't it better to start a life of your own? It wasn't so long ago you were pushing me and Gary back together. What's changed your mind? <laughs> All I'm bothered about is you and Kylie. I just want you to be happy, you know. You go out, say. Eh? Enjoy yourself. Sorry, I'm late, Vince. You ready? I left Charlie man in the office for a bit. You right? You know he'll screw things up. You go back, I'll get the bus. You're already late, aren't you? You can manage for half an hour. No, you're all right, honest. Don't be daft, I'll drop you. Don't want to get your hair spoiled. Looks great like that. I'll get the car started. You hurry up, eh? <sighs> Wish you wasn't like this. Come on, he's only giving you a lift. Stop feeling so guilty. Going out with your mate, it is allowed, you know. I thought she'd have been here by now. Well, she's probably having a job getting out, isn't she? And she let her husband wanted to go to the pub with her tonight. I hope she hasn't gone with him. I thought she was on the rocks there, marriage. Well, it is, yeah. They broke up just before Christmas, and now he's trying to get back in with her. And she doesn't want that? No. So, is she going to leave him? <sighs> I wish she would, yeah. But, I mean, it's dead hard. I've got no job. She's got a kid. Well, what do you do if she does leave him? Live together. I haven't really thought about it. Getting a job might help. <sighs> I'd clean sewers if it meant I could make a go of it with her. Are you sure about all this? It is a big step. Too right I am. I've never felt like this about anyone before. I just hope that she turns up tonight. It'll be the first time you've spent any proper time alone. She feels like you do, she'll turn up. By the time I'm getting off, I'll be back about ten or so. But if you want to stay any longer, I can always go around the club and twiddle me thumbs. Cheers, Teddy. Hold on, don't I get a kiss? Do you want me to come inside with you and see if they've turned up yet? There's no need for that. It's like eight going into pubs on you, though. Know. I'll be fine. You seem dead nervous. What's up? I'm, I'm just worried about work, that Charlie can handle it. But the sooner you were there, my dad will go mad if he messes up. Oh, I'm going now. At least there's one thing I'm not bad at, eh? Right, I'll see you later. Uh, don't be too late, eh? You look lovely. Is that all you can think about? I didn't mean it like that, Liz. I'm going. What do you think about the border? Eh, uh, yeah, OK, but you'll have to give us a hand, cos it's a bit filly, those bits. Oh, God, don't look at me. It was useless at school and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cheryl. All right, Ted. All right. Eh, uh, I've picked a new wallpaper. I thought I'd make a start on sniffing the walls tonight. Funny time to start decorating, isn't it? Eh, uh, I think I'll make a start, eh? Me and Beck had some chicken pie with that, do you? Yeah, yeah, anything, thanks, love. I could have done this for you at weekends, you know, or could have got a few days off work. Oh, my papa won't tell you he's prepared to do it. He's doing back his room for me as well, and he's let me pick some dead expensive wallpaper. Brilliant day. Very, very nice. So, uh, we're going to put up with this noise all night. Have you before? Could you see Ollie? Hey? Ollie, did you see him? Uh, no, he wasn't in there. So Rosie, though. And was she? She says she hasn't gambled since I left. Really? Did, uh, did you tell about the meeting in there? Sure, listen. I'm staying in late till she gets out. Um, you don't mind me staying here a bit longer, do you? No, of course not. Thanks. Uh, there's some uh, chicken pie going spare here. Do you fancy some? Oh, thanks, sir. You're awful good to me. announced it was to expand its operations. 
Sampson and Sons started ten years ago with a small business grant specializing in making luxury recycled paper. Profits for the business more than doubled last year and the company... He was meeting me mates in town, but he insisted on driving me there. Oh, it was terrible. I had to get a taxi back here. Oh, I thought he'd missed you. No, it's all right. At least you're here now. Uh, Another minute and we'd have missed each other. Have you still got the key? Oh. Shane? In here. Do you know what time it is? You should be at the theatre. Oh, can't hack it, Jack. <laughs> Oh, hack Jack. <laughs> Have you been drinking? No. Breathe on me. <sighs> What's up with you? No, I'm not drunk. I'm just exhausted. I can't handle it tonight. What have you told the theatre? Yeah, yeah, the understudy's going on. You know, he's thrilled. Probably been dying for me to break a leg anyway. We should have called the doctor. No, no, I'm fine. Listen, I'm, I'm just tired, you know, totally bushed. I just need a decent sleep. Oh, Shane. What? Well, my dad better than Josh. They're expecting to see you. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know what? I'll be glad when the stupid panto's finished. It's wrecking you. I'll go on tomorrow. I promise. Just go and sleep. Been sick if you hadn't made it. Yeah, well, I did. <laughs> Seems funny being here in someone else's place. What, like it's all being set up, you mean? Sorry. Well, there's nowhere else to go, though, is there? So let's just make the most of it. Are you still happy about this? Me and you. Are you sure you don't want to back out before things go too far? I told you I want to. What I just don't want you to think that we're just coming here for sex. I don't. I haven't been able to think about anything else but you for days and days, you know. Are you sure you want us to go on? I mean, what about Gary? I don't want to talk about Gary. This is what I want. Honest. How long have you been like this? Since I came home. But why didn't you ring the theatre and tell them? Well, he says he told them. Oh, no, he hasn't. It was like World War Three down there. It was practically a riot when everyone found out the understood you had to go on. But he told me that he'd phone them. The house manager's going off his head, calling them for all sorts. They've had to refund money to loads of people who wanted to see him. Well, Shane got tickets for me dad and Bev. Did you see them down there? All I saw were loads of narky families wanting the money back. You sure you're not drunk? No, he's totally exhausted. He's hardly speak. He was so tired. He's going to get into big trouble for doing this. Well, he can't help it if he's worn out. Come in. Not too late, am I? No, no, you're all right. I can always nip around to the club for an hour if you want, you know. Yeah, I'll just nip the bog. Right, uh, I'd better go. Right, all right, I'll walk you home. No, no. Gary might still be on the taxis. I'll see you as soon as I can, eh? The party across the close up mix. Yeah. See ya. Nice. Nice. Everything all right? Yeah. Except I can't even walk at home. Have you decided what you're going to do? <sighs> no idea. Well, you can't carry on like this. I know. 
never stay to me. I'm obsessed. I feel like I'm in that film love story. Oh, yeah, I know the one. But didn't she snuff it? Oh, thanks a lot, mate. Oh, sorry, mate. It's not a film, though, is it? What do you reckon I should do, Teddy? Well, it's not for me to say, is it? I've never been in the same position as you. You have no ties, no job, not to keep you here. If I was you, I'd do one. Disappear off the face of the earth. It's probably your only way out. I might have to have another go at this. He hasn't made a very good job of it. Why? Well, looks all right to me. I don't know why he didn't let me decorate. Well, he's the landlord. He offered to pay for the paper and everything. Mm. And I wonder why. Maybe he's more interested in you, eh? Oh, Eddie, don't be so soft. I know some fella's heads work. He's got no-one, that fella. Now he's homing in on you. A girl whose husband's away in Dubai. Nice little soft touch for Billy Nomates. <laughs> it's a bit over the top, isn't it? Well, can't you see you're encouraging him? Oh, that's very good of you, Teddy. Do you want another beer, Teddy? Eddie, you've got it wrong. I know you're only trying to look after me, but that's just paranoid. Terry's all right. He could probably end up as a good friend. Yeah, well, you still managed to work out, remember? And what if he wants more than that? What? Since when did you start becoming the heavy father-in-law? I just care about you. I just want you to know the dangers of having someone like him calling around, that's all. I'm going to go to bed and forget about what you've just said. I'll decide who I speak to, not you. Sarah, I didn't mean to... about you. He's another baby, boy. Go to sleep. I've got to be up in the morning. It's dead real. We were fishing together. Not now. Why do you keep blanking me, Linz? I'm trying, but you just keep pushing me away. Caddy, please, I'm tired. It wasn't true what you said before. I'm not just after one thing. It just wants to be like we were. And maybe sex is a way of doing that for me, but the important thing is I want us to be like we used to be. Just let me go to sleep, will you? Switched off. Yeah. Same rule goes for Jimmy when he gets back home. I don't want people bringing my home to buy drugs. They don't know the address, you know. Has Jimmy phoned you at all? No. It's been nearly a week now. God forgive me, but half of me wishes he'd get picked up. Huh? Even if it meant him having to spend more time in prison. Better than living like this. I hate not knowing where he is, you know. 
Not knowing what he's up to. What if the police raid the house again? Couldn't stand it, you know. Thought on my own. Not with own Jimmy. Mum? Hey, you're all right, Mum. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I think she's missing your dad. Look, I'll get on the phone to Uncle Billy's, tell him to come home. No, love, no, it's all right. I, I'm fine, honest. I'm, I'm just being soft. He'll be home soon enough. I was just feeling a bit down, that's all, you know. You know what you need, don't you? A good night out. Listen, why don't you come over the road at me and Kylie later to the party? Oh, I don't know. I'm not really in a party mood, love. Well, you won't know till you get there, will you? You go on. You go out with Lindsay and Kylie. Me and Charlie come out the office. Go on, Mum. You deserve a good night out, a bit of fun. I better get ready for work. You will come to the party, though, won't you? Um, yeah, OK. I'll... <laughs> Look, uh, you don't mind me going out again, do you? No, oh, honest. You go on. I meant what I said before, you know. And uh, I'm sorry about last night. If it upset you. It's all right. I was a bit upset about Kelly. Yeah, why? Well, Ed and Steve are thinking about getting a divorce. Well, they've only been married a few years. Yeah, about the same as us. Oh, why? He says they've just grown away from each other. Like, they split up for a few days like us, but even though they're back together, Kelly says it's still not right. You're not saying we should get a divorce, are you? Don't be soft. I'm talking about Kelly and Steve. Well, I think they're stupid. I mean, look at your mum and dad. I mean, they've been close to divorce in the past, but they've gone for it, worked at it, and now they've got a good marriage. So you think that's what Kelly should do, then? Well, too right. And if I was that Steve, I wouldn't be letting her go off with me kid. No. My mum and dad got divorced, and there was no need for it. All it did was screw up the family. You said your mum and dad were always rowing and that? So what? Everyone rows. Just because you fall out every now and then doesn't mean you've got to get a divorce. Nah, it's for failures. Even if the husband goes off with someone else? Or even the wife? Even then? Remember when your dad went to live with that Cathy from the betting shop? Well, your mum got over that, didn't she? Yeah, use your place. Fetch me twice as much, so I don't have to keep phoning. Use your place, yeah. See you later. Yeah. Jack, you're awake. Hiya, Katie. She's still asleep. I don't know what you're looking so happy about. What's going on? This fella calls right at the theatre last night and he's acting like nothing happened. He's even been on the local radio. Oh, we joking. Oh, I'm gonna have to do some serious sucking up to Derek and old Cartwright. How much had you had to drink? I wasn't drunk, I was exhausted. So I feel on that. A lot better for a good night's sleep, thanks. Are you sure you shouldn't see a doctor? No, no, look, I'm fine. I'd just better get down to the theatre and do some creeping. So what did they say on the radio? Well, there's already a queue for refunds. They couldn't handle him onto people last night. The sooner this show's over, the better. Yeah, well, it's not doing you any good. And to be honest, Katie, I think it's taken it over you and all. You look terrible. It's because I happened to have a spot for the first time in my life. Just think of the last night, Katie. No more screaming kids, no more matinees, no more groupies. Hey, <laughs> you're all right. You'll probably land another job right away. I'm not sure I will. Oh, something will turn up. Actually, I could do that the slug of working for a couple of months. Just think, Jack, in a few weeks, we could be back in good old Oz. Well, better get myself looking human again. Did he say you were going to Australia? Just for a holiday, yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? Then he wants to come back here and try for a film or something. But what if he doesn't get anything? Would you stay there? I didn't think I could let him go without me. Not now, no. Things are looking serious. Could you fix us a coffee, please? Yeah, just a sec. Oh, by the way, is it number two? He's just turns up to keep the other one company. I need to get some slogans printed up, though, you know, for, for each different market and plan I decide on. Anyway, Jackie, if you get these unpacked, I want a nice little pyramid in the window display. Well, what about your Valentine's Day display? Oh, yeah. Um, I'll leave it a couple of weeks then, eh? <laughs> You're the boss. Anyway, Jackie, if you could unpack all of these, um, I'm going in the back, put the kettle on, I'm parched. Yeah. Boss. How are you coping with her? Oh, all right, you know. Got enough to cope with his own. What's he up to now? I haven't seen him round here for a while. 
No, no, he's, uh, he's gone down south, you know, to see his brother. Did you, um... Did you hear any more about the police coming round before Christmas? It was nothing to do with Jimmy. Yeah, well, I believe he loved thousands, wouldn't How do you mean, Ron? Look, Jack, I know it's none of my business, love, but... But he was into drugs before, wasn't he? How can he be sure he's not into them again? It's his record, Ron, nothing else. He was as upset as I was when they raided our house. He's behaving himself, he really is. They just won't give him a chance, you know. Just got lumped in with everyone else to have their houses done. Hey, Sarah! Yeah? What do you think? Yeah, I like it. I'm glad you chose that pattern. How long do you think it'll take? It'll be done in a couple of days. I won't be able to do any more because I'm going out tonight. Oh, that's all right. Me and Becca are going out as well. Anywhere special? Just the surprise birthday do for Sinbad. She's really looking forward to staying over with Nick's kids. Yeah, that's where I'm going as well. Hey, Red. Hi, Hello. Made an earlier start today, have we? Looks great, doesn't it? Very nice. Don't worry, Ed. I'll give you a night off tonight. You won't have me under your feet. Right. So, uh, if you and Becca are going round to mix, shall I give you the knock when I'm leaving? We can walk around together. Yeah, if you like. Yeah, no problem. You all right? Yeah. It's OK. I'm on my own. My mum didn't see you coming here, did she? No, no, she's busy in the shop. So was um, everything OK when you got home last night? Yeah, until Gary woke up when I got into bed. You didn't, um... No. <laughs> Nothing happened. The harder he tries, the worse it gets. Oh, I just can't take being with him anymore. I don't know what to do. I'd leave him, but I know he'd never give me a divorce. Well, have you asked him? Oh, no, no. I Only mean, in a kind of roundabout way. I told him this friend of mine was thinking about getting divorced and he was dead against it. His mum and dad got divorced, you see. So he thinks no matter what happens in a marriage, he should keep working away at it. Are you sure he hasn't got any idea about us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure about that. Need to put a stop to it by now. What are we gonna do? And after last night, we're doing the right thing. I just don't know what's gonna happen to us. I don't know what we can do. Is Mr. Cork here, then? Uh, no, he's not. He must be his business colleague, uh, Gary Stanley. Yeah, that's right. Is Mr. Cork still away? Uh, Rotterdam, isn't it? Who are you? Mr. Tilston. Pleased to meet you at last. Oh, right. You may have heard of me. My friends call me Big Davy. But you can call me Mr. Tilston. Please sit down, Mr. Stanlow. You can spare the time for a bit of a meeting, I hope. We would very much appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> Listen, everybody, there was a barmaid down at the Swan. Simba left five minutes ago. Right. Oh, yeah. They all go upstairs and keep a lookout. Give me a shout as soon as it gets from the pathway. Operation Simba. So, what's he got then? It's a surprise. Oh, go on, tell us. No, you'll have to wait like everybody else. Spoil sport, you are. <laughs> Saw him out to the bedroom window, Dad. He's coming. Well, get ready, everybody. Mike, get your camera, will you? I want to see that look on his face. Birthday, mate. Yay! You've got it off in your present. <laughs> what is it? Hey, it's a sunbed, isn't it? Whole year round sound for me, hey? Well, I'm not a bit, then. Oh, it's one of them uh, treadmill things, they're good and all, just right for jogging, eh? Hey? Well, if Mohammed won't go to the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a direct result of your little buying trip to Holland, we estimate my business has lost something approaching. Fifteen thousand pounds. Are 
I take it you fully understand the situation? Yeah, but you wouldn't supply Jimmy after the raid. We had to go elsewhere. That's beside the point. Look at it this way. I'm Mr. Hypermarket, right? Along comes Jimmy Corkle and his colleague. They bowl in the front door and put up a market store selling groceries bang in the middle of one of my aisles. It's not on, is it? Well? I suppose not, no. Well, I'm glad you understand. When is Mr. Corkle due to return? Not sure. Well, he must have given you some idea when he'd be back here. Monday, I think. Well, in that case, perhaps you'll be so good as to fill us in on your future projections for growth. Your sales plan, that sort of thing. Because, as I'm sure you appreciate, there's been a serious breach of ethical business practice here. Come on, Sam, faster. Hey, I've been on my round, you know, I'm knackered already. Yeah, come on, let me show you. I was on one of these on the Aussie the other day. Make way for the expert. Well, come on, mate. It's all yours. Right. Now, all you got to do, you see, you just got to get it going at a nice, steady pace, just like that. Uh, well, I think you've done enough walking for today. Yes, will you stop fussing? I'm fine. You see, just keep it nice and steady. Come on, Rob. Get off there. You'll give yourself another funny turn. Uh, will you shut up? I told you, I'm fine. Just turn this thing off. Come on. 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 Come I had a nice leisurely place, didn't I? Not try and beat limp with Christie. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have been on in the first place. <laughs> Want a game of Twister, Mr. Dixon? No, thanks, son. I think I've had enough excitement for one night. Um, Terry and Sarah will play, will you? Hey, leave us out to be. Come on! Oh, 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 go on, go on. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm off, then. Do you want me to come with you? No, you enjoy yourself. See ya. Cheers. See ya. Happy birthday, Simbad. Oh, thanks, Jack. See you, Jack. See ya. Well, thanks for the pleasure, mate. You're all right. You keep an eye on me when you go jogging, though, can't they? No more giving me the snack on that. Ron Dick won't make it a second hand. Oh. Seems ridiculous, though. Mm -hmm. What are you going to keep it? I'm thinking of getting a uh, mini gym going in the uh, garage for us. Oh, I can't Don't miss. panic. I'll be keeping fit with you. You never know, son. I might cop off this year if you keep in touch with this. <laughs> Mind you, doesn't look like me and Mandy are going to get it back together. I wish I had a baby with it. And um, if she was, she would have spotted the deliberate mistake. Hey? Well, I made up with a surprise party and everything, mate, but uh, it's not my birthday. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate, but it's, uh, it's next Friday, the 26th. Don't believe it. Well, that's all right. And don't tell anyone. I'm not going to split ears and spoil the party, am I? <laughs> right. If you could do the minutes, so to speak, Gary, pass on the important points from this meeting to Mr. Corkill. Good night. Oh, hello, Mrs. Corkill. We were just leaving. I'm sorry we didn't have an appointment, but we needed a chat with your husband's associate. Who are you? What's going on? Good night. I've only just got this out of stress and you've got the police rounds again. What do they want? Oh, it's not Jimmy, is he? Has he been arrested? No. It wasn't the police. Who was it, then? They're in the same business as us. I've got to tell Jimmy they don't want to sell it on their patch. Drug dealers in my house! <sighs> this is what I've been dreading all along! <laughs> well, what the hell are we going to do, eh? Why did you ever get into this filthy, bloody business? Hi. I'm going to leave without you following me. Sorry. I bought you this. What are you doing? Give me presents. Well, I know it's good. I use it myself. Stocking. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Very thoughtful of you. What's that? Present from Lee. Sean has asked me to make a deal for your good day. Spock cream. 
Because it must be love. Smoothie. Listen, I'm going to try and catch up with Shane. I'll just tell him if I'm leaving. Are you going to be late? Yeah, probably just going to town, but I should go or something. All right, see you later. Ta-da, oh. love. Oh! Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want another go? Oh, no, thanks, mate. Should we get another drink? <laughs> Come on, Bev, me and you on a twister. Come on. Oh, what happens if you fall? I'll get crushed to death. I don't mean zaft. I'm just heavy bone, aren't I? Come on, love. Go. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't be doing this if I was sober. Come on. Oh, we'll Good Red. Red. Left Red. foot. Red. Red. Yeah. Watch up, will you? There's no room for me on this. I can go get this one to bed then. Better get off. Got to open the shop in the morning. I'll uh, walk it on for you. I don't mind. What are you doing? What if someone sees us? I need to talk to you. I've got an idea. You say Gary won't give up. And you say he doesn't agree with divorce and all that. Yeah. And if you left him, we couldn't live round here because he'd come after you. So, the only thing to do is get away from here. The pair of us. The only future we've got is running away, miles away from here. Hang on, Mike. Just a minute. Isn't this a bit quick? I mean, we haven't known each other that long. Long enough to know we want to stay with each other. Come on, let's do it. And what about Kylie? Well, she'd come with us, obviously. <sighs> but you don't know anything about kids. They're a big responsibility. Yeah, I realize that. How can you? The hard work, Mike. <sighs> Look, I haven't told anyone about this, but. Well, I, I do know what it's like to have a kid. I've got one. What? Oh. Well, it's a well-kept secret, but you know Bev's little boy, Josh? Yeah? Well, he's my kid. But I thought... Yeah, well, my dad just treats him as his own, but he really is my kid. What? Bev and my dad split up for a while, and... Well, I don't know, it just happened. And we got back together not long after, and then my dad just took Josh on as his own. I mean, there was nothing serious between me and Bev, just a bit of a mad fling. Like us, you mean? No, no, not like us at all. To me, this is the real thing. I want us to be together for the rest of our lives. And you've got no worries about Kylie at all. I just do what my dad did and treat her like my own daughter. I can't believe you're a father. I'd never have guessed. I want Kylie with us. It's not a problem, honest. I want us to have a future together, and this is the only way that we can do it. So are we going to do it? Come on, please, at least just think about it. You really mean this? Too right. You, me and Kylie. We get as much tossed together as we can and then we just do one. Can you face that? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I can do it. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm dragging you away from the party. No, you didn't. I had to call her at the nightclub anyway. Oh. See you for the next decorating session tomorrow, then. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, Ed. All right. Yeah, well, uh, I'll see you, Ed. I'll see you, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Terry. It's all right. See ya. Right, Eddie. We have got to get this sorted out. Every time you see Terry, you are rude, offhand, or both. What is wrong? Are you, um, are you and him, you know? For God's sake, no! I told you! What is your problem? I just don't want him here! I don't know. I, I can't believe I'm feeling like this. It's like I'm jealous of him or something. Jealous? Of me and Terry, but why? I'll take the most of I've had a few pints, maybe maybe a few too many. I'll just leave it, all right? I'm going to get my head down. Don't you think we ought to talk about this? Eddie! I'm sorry, but I... I... Look, just leave it, my way. What are you doing here? What about the party? Go away, will you? I don't want you following me all the time. Just leave me alone, will you? I'm 
sorry. Eddie? Yeah? You awake? I didn't mean to say all that before. I feel terrible. It's all right. No, love, it's not all right. I shouldn't have said it. So can... Can we just forget all about it? We're still mates. <laughs> yeah. It's just a... Well, just I feel a bit foolish, that's all. Please don't. Oh, I hate you being all lonely and depressed. You've always been the fella to make me smile, cheer me up. You've always been on my side, Ed. Always. I'm sorry, love. It must be the state I'm in. I just feel like I've got no one at the moment. Family's all over the show. Don't think like that. You've got me and Beck. Always been there for us. Why shouldn't we be there for you? No, don't mind, you know. Don't mind what? You feeling jealous? What you said? I, I just want you to know that. I thought I'd ruined everything. <gasps> well, you haven't. Brookside Books is available in the shops. Don't. Don't say it. If you don't say it, then it never... You can pretend it never happened. Yeah, but... It did happen. I'll get off. I'll go. Sarah. Last night, I... did you feel one half of what I felt? Anyone home? Granddad, Granddad! H has been as good as gold. <laughs> Not too early, are we? Oh. Um, I better get off. Can we leave for work? See ya. More trouble than Rosie. Come on, let's have a look. Did I leave my watch on the windowsill? Come in. Are you doubting he's got tonsillitis? Well, let's have a look. Get off, it's not a flame and peep show. Look, it's bright red, I told you. Well, what could you expect your throat to be? Daffodil yellow. He's scared. I'm not. Honest, love, I don't feel too hot at the moment. 
I don't think I'm up to a whole session of this cardiac rehab stuff. How do you know till you try? <coughs> I think I better give it a miss, you know, love. Tell you what, I'll start next week, hey? Two o'clock, on the dot, the savvy physio department. Yeah, but it'll be all old people. Place will be full of doddery old geriatrics. Well, you feel at home then, won't you? <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Oh, you be good for Bebsy. You be a brave boy and go to your first session. And this weekend, for my treat, I'll take you somewhere very posh. Stuck in some Dutch prison. Where the hell is he? The ferry was probably delayed. Don't worry, Jack. You won't get caught. He's too clever. Clever? Jimmy, clever? Where did you get that idea from? Oh, yeah, so clever he gets a visit from the mob. It wasn't the mob. Well, it was Liverpool's equivalent. No one normal wears suits that smart. And will you stop doing that? Can what? Slopping milk all over me carpet. Sit properly at the table of your eason. Must be a strain. Sorry? A strain. Well, for you, stuck in the middle of all these rows between Eddie and Rosie. Still, probably gonna blow over soon, eh? You'd be glad to get your flat back to yourself, won't you? Yeah. Must be a drag having your father in law around all the time. Anyway, I've got to start some work. Thanks for the tea. Eh? Uh, thanks for having Becca. Ah, it's our pleasure. Hey, uh, you've made quite a hit, you know. With a certain gentleman of my acquaintance. I have. He never stops talking about you. Guess who? Look, Mick, I'm honestly not... Well, I'll have a guess. He's tallish. Just recently retired from foreign parts. Terry Sullivan. Oh, I don't say it like that. OK, he's not in the first flush of youth, but uh, there's a lot to be said for the older man, you know. See you later. Imagine in the worst, Mum, you'd be stuck in a traffic jam on the M6. Yeah, probably. Oh, there's Bev. I'm going to be late for work now. Oh, and that's what I meant to do here. Uh, that video. Better drop it back to Mummy. Mummy! 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 Oh, that daft cat, it's fallen asleep in her uh, doll's pram. Oh, bless. Is the pussy cat having a little nap in your pram, eh? Yeah, she wants you to come and see it. She's put blankets on it. <laughs> come on, then, sweetie. Bye. Nice. Well, where's me welcome home? Kiss, kid. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. These are fragile. Fessies for you. For me? Oh, Jimmy, I don't want fessies. All I want is... Listen, you. I have been worried sick. This has been the worst week of my life. I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. Them men in suits come round. What men? I couldn't go through this again, Jimmy. Well, don't worry. You won't have to. I'll send Gary next time. <sighs> what are these, then, eh? So these men in suits look... Love, all right. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Did you buy them in Basingstoke? Eh. Uh, so, did you get to see Uncle Billy in the end, or? No, we, eh. Uh, oh, Billy rang, actually. Oh. You know, you know, your dad was just uh, on business in London. It was yeah. just if he had time to, you know. Linz, don't forget this video. We ain't just going to take it back. Oh, yeah. I thought you took that one back to Mac the other day. No. Yeah, I did only, um, Callie wanted to see it again. Good trip then, Jim. Yeah, great. Right, listen, I better get off. I'm um, gonna be late for work. Okay, love. <laughs> Come here, you. What? You just be careful what you say in front of our lens. Yeah, don't worry. See you later, love. Yeah, I'm off. Draw, Mum. See ya. <clears throat> She's been out of her mind. She had you in one of them multiple pileups on the M6. Haven't you got something to drop off at the dickhouse, love? Oh yeah, um, yeah. Won't be a sec. Gonna keep an eye on Carly for me. Oh, what's she done now? God, it's like Lime oh, Street Station in here. Listen, Jimmy, that could be. The, the thing is, while you were away, these fellas, oh, we've got big problems. Hey, look who it is. Come in, copper. Hi. It's all right, Gary. You can stop wiping your fingers on the curtains now. Any chance? Don't come round here, mate. 
No matter how desperate you are, okay? She's all right, scraped in it. You can't even see it. Oh, my God. Greg Brady. It's Greg Brady. I know, love. Uh, listen, can you give us a minute? Doing a bit of business here. You are absolutely my favourite in Sunset Bay. Thank you. That one where you saved that snotty French girl from the shock, that was brilliant, that was. <laughs> what kind of business? Uh, just a bit of uh, private business. Mr Cochrane here. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. I called you Greg, didn't I? I've got used to it. Uh, so, a corky car's going to taxi you around then, are they? Uh, no, not exactly, love. Um, the thing is, it was going to be uh, a bit of a surprise for your Kylie. Kylie's your little girl, is that right? Well, um, I hope she likes the panto because her... Granddad? Her granddad's going to take her to the show this afternoon. Oh, Dad. I'll leave a couple of comps at the box office. Oh. And if you want to come backstage at all... Nice one. That's really lovely. She'll be made up. Hi, right, love, you can drop that video off then. And uh, I'll see you this afternoon. And the other one I loved. It was dead scary. Anyway, right, you. What's been going on here? These fellas in suits. Is that who I think it is? Because if you have got us into some kind of deep trouble with them, lad, you better start praying. Does my dad know? Hey, I'm the manageress now. I make all the executive decisions. So what you're having here, then? Oh, uh, this is where I'm going to put my new range. What new range? Heartsy's health boots. Isn't that pansies? Mm, not the fella I'm dealing with, love. Anything but. Jack, do us a favour. Give your dad a ring. If you can't find his appointment card, tell him it's in the tea towel drawer. No, Heartsy's. It's a flower. Oh, is it? That must be why they have the little flower logo next to the name, then. No, uh, I just thought it'd be the type of stuff that Ron should be having. You know, vitamin supplements, fish oils, that kind of thing. Hey, where's my dad going this afternoon, then? Oh, it's his first cardio rehab session. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, my God. What's going on here? Not answering. Oh, I must have gone back to bed. Keep ringing. Wake him up, the lazy beggar. <laughs> Didn't think I'd see you today. I've only got five minutes, is it OK? Yeah, that sound. They both oh. out. Oh, Mike. Well, if that hasn't woke him, he'll need a bomb under him. I hope he's all right. He had a bit of a throat this morning. Do you want a new steak, babe? Yeah. There you go. Mm, what do you say? Thank you. Perhaps he's gone out. You look a bit peaky, love. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Where could he have gone, then? Eggs? Yeah, why not? Ah, oh, great. You see, the thing is, Bev, you know, she's very new to the business, so she tends to get a bit over-enthusiastic with the ordering. <laughs> well, I think we can take, say, probably, what, eight dozen of your hands? Ah, oh, smashing, Maxie. And especially nice to do business with somebody who knows their own mind. I'll get them sent round then, eh? Good. So if that's all I've got to dash... You see, what I thought you could do with I'm them... I'm actually wrong with both of it, kind of yeah. pushed. Yeah, but what I thought you could do with them is use them as a, you know, a kind of publicity gimmick. Take out half a page ad in the Echo. Special offer, free egg with every three meals. Free egg? Yeah, free egg. What, you mean we offer our customers one egg each to take home? No, not an egg each, Maxie, no. One egg per family. I'm telling you, they'll be falling over themselves to book in. Use it as a, a marketing strategy. I tell you what, I, I can let you have ten dozen if you like. <laughs> Actually, Ron, I was thinking more in terms of using them for souffles, uh, omelettes. Omelettes? What kind of eggs are we talking about here, Ron? Easter eggs. Oh. <laughs> Easter, Easter eggs? Yeah, you know, milk chocolate, <laughs> yeah. plain chocolate, that type of thing. I'll tell you what, I think I could let you have 150. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. But, uh, How many shall I send you, then? None. None? None? What do you mean, none? What happened to the eight dozen all of a sudden and now it's none like it? <sighs> OK, it's OK. It's only eggs, isn't it? It's only money. No good killing yourself over a few eggs. Well, Ron, I really am very sorry, but... Look, I, I've got a dash. I'll see you later. Yes, and that's where you're making your first mistake. What is? All this dashing about. Maxie, you keep this up, you're going to be dead in five years. I mean, look at you. Look at you. You're stressed out. You've got to relax, I'm telling you. Come on, let me show you. Come on, sit down. Come on, both of you, sit down. Because I want to demonstrate to you a few basic techniques in the art of relaxation. You see, it is all in the breathing. And 
slowly out. All afternoon. At the panto, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, my mum's at work, so it's just Gary. Well, as quick as you can then, now, dearie. Will it be safe? I mean, both your dad and Bev out. Oh, a whole afternoon together, eh? It'll be a whole life together soon. You see, the amazing thing about it, and some people might call this spooky, but not me. No, the amazing thing about it is, uh, do you take sugar, Max? No. The truly wonderful thing to remember is that the end is not the end. God, please let it be the end. Well, we can't sit here all day. One of us is going to have to make a move. Right, good. No, you see, it is merely the beginning. And I know because I've been there. Did I tell you what happened to me when I died? Yes, Ron. Did I? Curiously enough, Ron, at this precise moment, death has never seemed more attractive. Well, I'm really glad you feel that way, Maxie, because that's what I want to do. I want to make people realise that death is nothing to be afraid of. But even so, life doesn't stop, does it? So Max is really going to have to make a move, aren't you, darling? Hey, and listen, you take it gently, do you hear? You don't want to land up in front of them pearly gates before your time, do you? <sighs> not that they were pearly, actually. Well, not when I was there. Come to think of it, they weren't even gates. It was... It was just like a sort of brilliant light. And I'm really going to have to do some work with Alice now, so if you don't mind, um, go now, darling. Relaxation, stress management. And remember, Maxie, nothing matters that much. I'll see you later. Ta-da, Max. Right, so uh, <laughs> what's this work that you do with young Alice, then? What is it, exercises and stuff like that? Right, well, lead on, Macduff. Let's get started. Well, this big baby fella. He says he's prepared to count one trip to Rotterdam as a mental aberration. Or two trips? That's one too many. He threatened you, like? In a really quiet voice, like a bank manager. And he had this gun in his briefcase, which he kind of accidentally made sure I saw. And this is big league stuff, Jimmy. That's exactly what they want you to think. Listen, soft lad. We've got 30 grand's worth of stuff to get rid of here. I'm not throwing that sort of investment down the drain. Yeah, but I don't want to get my legs shot off. I've grown quite attached to them over the years. Right here. Stop getting that lock cut. Well, I'm not taking any risks anyway. There. What's this? Bulletproof vest. <laughs> Are you serious? Dead serious. And I want a gun. You've got to get us both the guns, Jimmy. No way. I know about guns. We get ourselves a piece and they just get bigger ones. Start down that road and where does it stop, eh? It's not how your life suddenly changes, isn't it, eh? I mean, you must have found that, Trish. No. One day you're a busy, successful PR woman, or whatever it was that you did. And the next you've got Alice and no. nothing will ever be the same again. Yeah, it's all coming out of the like me, really. I mean, one day, there I am, running my own business, firing on all cylinders, and look at me now. <laughs> In and out of the Aussie all of the time, pill sprays. Tell you, Trish, it's a whole different life. And the people you meet. I mean, when you're healthy, you don't have a clue that this other life exists. And now suddenly you're part of it. So you don't have anywhere to be then today, Ron? No. Well, not until me cardio rehab, you know. Not till two. Well, I don't like to panic you, but it's, um, it's ten to two now. Oh, my God, it's not. She murdered me! Lovely time, sweetheart, and be a good girl to your granddad. She will, too. Okay, yes, yeah, sir. Michael, Michael, quick, phone a taxi. Oh, never mind, it'll take too long. I'll pick one up with a roundabout. Hello, Mr. Dixon. All right, Mum.
expect you back so early? Yeah, well, um, I told him I had an emergency dentist appointment. What are you doing? Moving out. Back to Rosie. I don't know. Isn't that... Isn't that a bit, like, overreacting? I'm your father-in-law, for God's sake. Oh, what happened last night was... Yeah, but if you move uh, out... What happened last night? It was the most wonderful night. I can't trust myself to be in the same room as you. Yeah, but if you move out, it's like saying it's going to happen again. And it's not going to happen again, because I'm not going to let it. It was my fault last night as much as yours. OK, it happened. We can't pretend that it didn't, but we can both take two steps back to where we were before, can't we? Can't we? I'd better get my chef on back. Uh, oh, best if I go now. No! You're fine on the city. It's fine. As long as we both stick to the rules. I suppose your dad comes home early. Or Bev. They won't. In your dad's bed, though. Oh, my God. Do they really sleep in that thing? Well, Bev thinks it's very tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> they promised me. They swore they'd deliver before midday. Give them a ring. I will. Hey, Jack, do us a favour, down Ron. I want to make sure he's gone to the hospital. What did I do with that number? It's got a pale morph card that says Hearties Health Foods. Hey, do I tell you we're going away for a long weekend? Found this ace five-star hotel in the lakes. <laughs> no one in. Good. Oh, bless that, love. You wait here for Grandad, OK? Come in. Shut the door. You got the stuff? Yeah. And particularly good gear it is, too. Hope Gary looked after you while I was away. How much? Uh, three wraps. 90 quid to you. Thanks for Jackie Cohill's granddaughter's stood out there. It's all right, love, not stopping. I just popped in to uh, thank me mate for the comp tickets. Me and Kylie were loving this show, aren't we, kid? Eh? It's wonderful, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Right, well, better get off. Don't want to miss Act 2, do we? See ya. Oh, what's he doing here and what are you giving him comps for? He's a fan. Well, I know a few words beginning with F to describe Jimmy Corkill, and fan's not one of them. Listen, don't get too mazy with him. He's trouble. He seems all right to me. Listen, is there another tub of this gel in that bag? What, in here? No, not that one. The... Oh, secrets, eh? No, oh, come on, Jack, stop messing. What's this? It's nothing. I just have to inject myself sometimes. Why? It's a medical thing. What medical thing? It's a medical thing. I'm a diabetic, all right? Hang on. Diabetics don't inject themselves sometimes and they just happen to feel like it. You're not a diabetic. I don't know. Playing now, have you were. <laughs> what's this then? Sherbet dip? Suppose he did have tonsillitis. Oh, hey, all love is another one. Oh, Can you manage? I'll the door for you. <laughs> Bye. See you, love. Draw. Suppose he's in a coma. He's more likely puffing and sweating down the physio. Suppose he's had another attack. He might have been on his way downstairs to ring for help. Oh, Beth. And now he's just lying there unconscious on the hall floor. Well, suppose he's been captured by Martians and then whisked away to have his brain reprogrammed. Jackie, this is no joke. Sorry. You've scared the wits out of me now. I am. I'm going to have to go and check on him, aren't I? Delivery, horses, health foods. Uh, what happened to you? I'm sorry, but I can't cope with you now. You'll just have to wait. I was promised delivery before midday. Listen, Bev, you deal with this loss. I'll check on Ron. Give us your keys. <sighs> I've wasted all day waiting for you. Do you think I've got nothing better to do? So, I'll see you later. Come on, then. Come on, Jackie, just give us a chance. There's things you don't know. They've got a mission entrance. That's the overture. It's not what you think. I can't even trust you to tell me the truth and the evidence is staring me in the face. You're a smart addict, Shane. That's what I think, and I never want to see you. Jackie! We're going to get off. We're going to need money. How much? I don't know. I just wish there was someone who could help us. I mean, someone we could talk to. 
We could go abroad or something. Well, yeah, I was thinking about that. I've got this mate, Keith, he works in Ankara. I was thinking maybe we could stay with him for a bit, get jobs out there. And nobody would track us down in Turkey, will he? Don't you need special permits to work in Turkey? Well, I don't know. I'll ring him later and find out. Love you. Love you. Maybe I can lend some money off me dad. Tell him I need it for some video equipment or something. I hate all these lies. I just wish we were in Turkey now. Ron, you there? Ron? You better. I've been Keep thinking of you. Voice down, will you? Where are they? It's okay. Your Jackie's gone out and Lindsay's having a lie down. She's got a headache or something. Yeah. Have them two had her out? I don't know. Oh, they're not talking to each other. Anyway, how'd you get on? Fine. Look at this little lot. Hey. I shifted most of that gear you cut yesterday a 5% on there what that baby fella's trading at. Uh, and the dealers went for it? Yeah, well, some of them were a bit scared, but not to worry, I expected that. Still, not bad. Better than I thought. Into profit yet? Hey, listen, lad, don't get greedy. If we break even, it'll be a bonus. Break even? Is that all? <sighs> Do you know, for someone who reads a lot, you're not very clever, are you, Gags? Listen, lad, even as we speak, there is someone out there, some bloke, right? Some dealer that I have just sold to who is busy covering his back. Do you know what he's doing? He's on the phone to that Davy fella. He's grassing on us, isn't he? Oh, my God, what are we going to do? Nothing. Wait for David to get in touch and then we negotiate. What if he wants to skip the negotiating stage? Well, you should have concentrated one of your pathetically few brain cells on that little problem before you got us in so deep, shouldn't you? Did you get us some guns? No guns, I told you. So what have you done with them vest things? Bought my wardrobe. Well, we'll go and get them then. We'll run this little lock down to the lock-up. And hey, you better keep the details of our latest little crisis stum from my Jackie. Otherwise, you'll be lucky if you've got even one brain cell left. Do you hear me? Hi, love. Been shopping? Where's Lindsay? Uh, got a headache. I see. Katie, will you answer that? I've got stuff on my hands. If it's a salon, tell them I'll be in at about four. <sighs> Hello? Hey, do you want me to do you one of these mud things? Yeah, I'm gone. A chain. Time to drown himself. Hello, what's he done? She's, um, she's just... Get lost. What a dickhead. I should have known he was too good to be true. Have you tried her out? Put it this way, I've seen the light. Shane Cochran is now history. And I don't want to talk about it. Right, your turn. Sit down. What are you going to do? Sort you out, your skin's a mess. Oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's gone all red and flaky around your mouth. I'll do you the facial. What's my dad doing? Oh, I looks a bit lost. She invites me for a coffee. God, no. We'll have the what happens when I died speech, which was fascinating the first time round, but the tenth time. Oh, don't be so mean. Listen, I had to thrill a minute account of his cardio rehab sessions last night, and I'm not sitting through that again. So, 
You didn't see Shane last night, then? No, I didn't. Let's have a look at your hands. Oh, Casey, what have you been doing? Oh, it's the dressing room. It's freezing in there. We've all got chapped hands. Look at that. You see those white flecks in your nails? That's mineral deficiencies. That's living off burgers and chips in the intervals. When was the last time you had a green salad, eh? Oh, um, Slave labour, that panto. You're never off stage, there's no fresh air. Junk food, freezing dressing rooms. No wonder your skin's in such a state. Right, I'm gonna wash this lot off my face and as soon as I've done that, I'm gonna sort you out. Headache, eh? Oh, Mum, beautiful things, headaches. When you wanna avoid something. Or somebody. I haven't been avoiding you. You've been avoiding me. Hey! Sorry, uh, just gotta get some of that in the wardrobe. We're having a private talk in here. What be a sec? You have to let me shoes. What do you want? Tell us. Uh, no, no, it's all right. I've got it now. Go what? See ya. Are you and Jimmy going out? Yeah. Soon. Does he have a clue what's going on? <sighs> please don't tell him, Mum, please. You and Mike Dixon, I. I know it's wrong, but I... I'll save it. Save it till we've got the place to ourselves. What a stupid place to keep them. You know what women are like for poking round, clearing things out. What if Lindsay had found them? She'd think it was me sports gear. She wouldn't have a clue what they were. Jimmy? Quick. Are you off out now? Are you going near the cleaners? I got too scared, so I'm picking up. What are you doing? Hmm? If I didn't know you better, I would think I'd just caught the pair of you in a compromising situation. What's going on? No. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? What's happened, Jimmy? Is it something to do with that little fella that came round here? Love, everything's fine. Just putting our vests on. Freezing up the savvy. in this box under the bar. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? Right, right. Could have been diligent, I suppose. No one's paying, no. Yeah. How much you pay for that bike? 40 quid. That's not bad. What, 40 quid for knackering them up? My legs are good enough for free. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at the wolf, man. <laughs> what are you going to call yourself then, John? Pepperoni, man. Pepperoni, <laughs> <laughs> man. Hey, Tiz, mate, you went to weight training once. Uh, briefly, but that was a proper gym. Yeah. Hey, this is a proper gym, mate. It's got a £200 a year membership list. Do you want to join? Uh, when you get the pool, the sauna, the bar, the music, and the drop dead gorgeous women in skimpy leotards, yeah. Oh, well, you're in luck there, mate, yeah, yeah. Got the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, yeah, do you want to go with this? Uh... Oh, yeah, they are. Oh. Aye, aye. Whose idea was this? Who's this? this? When did you get this lot fitted out then? This morning. Hey, run, fancy bodies. <laughs> Better have them, Nick. Mind you, I was hot stuff on one of them yesterday. Colony rehab. Tell you what, they've got all the latest machines down there. Two miles, it did. Two miles, eh? Yeah, yeah. then I've done another half a mile trying to find a taxi to get there on time. So you two are trying to get in shape then? Well, we're just trying to get fit. That was the plan, but uh, Pepper only man here wants to look like that. <laughs> I'm telling you, mate, women ain't so like, you know. <laughs> Hey, I'll get you some leaflets from the Aussie if you like. What about women? Is that desperate? <laughs> no, no, about low-fat diets, stress management, that kind of stuff. I'm getting Maxi Farnham some before he kills himself. No, I'll tell you what, mate. Women might like a bit of a bronzy, a bit of flesh, but when it comes to the Albulgian biceps and the twitching chest, oh. <laughs> well, how come Arnie Schwarzenegger so popular, then? My God. A gym. <laughs> All right, Ted. Do us a favour, Eddie. I'm settling arguments here. Does your Rosie you like bulging biceps? I don't know if she's ever seen any. Not on me, anyway. Listen, you haven't seen her, have you? She's not in. Eh? Uh, she's gone to work, Ed. About nine-ish. And your Lee's gone to school, footy today. He's got his kit with him. Well, you notice people when you're home all day. You still stop them now that your daughter-in-law's then, Ed? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the time being, mate. Anyway, I'll see you now, OK? Good see you, Ed. How are you, Eddie? Do us a favour, mate. Shut the door before you go, will you? It's freezing in here. You're not going to start going on again about Sarah. I'm telling you, fellas, the guy is seriously smitten. I know she's married, but... Oh, my God, what a smile. Knock out. Oh, I'll be here. You can knock, but still fancy me chances there. Not quite up to professional standards, but not bad, eh? And loads cheaper. How much are you charging, then? Oh, you can make me tea for me. I'm starving. Let's see what you fancy. How about some cheese on toast? 
Oh, not for me. I'll do yours, but I've got to get down to the theatre. Eh, uh, you've still got to eat. Yeah, I will after the show. Oh, Jack, I think Shane's here. Oh, God, no, I'm not here, all right. What's happened with you two? Listen, if you've heard rumours about him and that tall girl with the long hair, they're not true. He can't stand it, he says she sings flat. Jackie? Go away, I'm not talking to you. Please, five minutes. Just do one, eh? Come on, two minutes, it's important. Listen, last night, what you found? What did you find? If you don't go away, I'm gonna phone the police shit in and tell them that you're harassing me. It's over, all right? I don't wanna see you again. Well, it's another one bites the dust. I don't have much luck, do I? God, Katie is the one decent fella in the world. Because if there is, I'd really like to meet him. Right. So now we've got the place to ourselves. I can explain everything. Sure you can. It's not some grubby little affair, you know, Mum. It's love and don't laugh. I'm not laughing, Linz. I took one look at him and that was it. It was that night Gary never turned up to take me home. You know, like all those phrases, love at first sight, head over heels, swept off my feet. Well, they're all true, Mum. That's how it was. I knew something was going on. I could tell from your face. The way you were wandering round, all lit up like Blackpool in November. I really, really love him. You don't know. Oh, yes, I do. I've been there. When? Well, not some secret passion. 23 years ago when I fell in love with your dad. Bells, nightingales, violins, the old works. Should have shut my ears and walked away, but I didn't. Because there was nothing I could do about it. Question is, sweetheart, what are you gonna do? You're not mad at me. I thought you'd be furious. Linz, if you really love him, I'm scared for you. I'm very scared, but I'm not angry. The thing is, Mum, me and Gary, it was... Well, it was over long ago. You wanted him back, love? Well, it's a marriage, isn't it? You try and patch things up for his sake, for Kylie's sake. But he was only here a week and I realised why I'd left him in the first place. The thing is, then, Mum, he still thinks he won't let me go. And if he ever finds out about Mike, he'll kill me. He won't. He will. He will. You don't know what he's like. Everyone thinks he's this easygoing kind of slob. But he's not going to lose me to another man. No way. He's got too much pride for that. And you know the way he is over our Kylie? He'd never let me take her. All right. Now you listen to me. There's things I knew that I'm not going to tell you. All I'm going to say is, the quicker you can get away from your Gary, the better. Why? No questions in, because I'm not going to answer them. I'm just telling you. If you feel the way you say you do about Mike Dixon, the pair of you get as far away from here as you can. We're going to. He's got this friend who lives in Turkey. I'm going to run away together. Me, Mike and Kylie. You do it, love. Do it now. And Mike Dixon can make you happy. That's all I ask for. Oh, Mum. Do you mind if I sit down, Ed? It's about your daughter-in-law, actually. Tell me if I'm overstepping the mark, but I was wondering what the situation is between Sarah and your son. I don't think that's any of your business. Uh, no, it isn't. I'm sorry I put that badly. It's just I really like Sarah. You mean you fancy her? Hmm? Go on, spit it out. Say what you mean. OK, yeah, I fancy her. I would like to ask her out, but obviously I don't want to step on any toes. So as a courtesy, I thought I'd ask you first whether... Well, whether the marriage is still on. Still on? <sighs> I'm in the right mess of this, aren't I? I think you're our lad, yeah. Well, I'll put you out your misery, shall I? My daughter-in-law's marriage is in very good shape, thank you. She's still very much in love with my son. That's all I wanted to know. What do you think? 
I think once you get the toning tables, then I've got serious competition on my hands. Yes. Hey, can you can have a go. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You're not going out tonight, then, Jack? Uh, no, not tonight. But still, if your fellas working all night. So what you do is just tuck your elbows right into your waist like that. Yeah. Keep your tummy tucked in. Hey, hang on a minute. She knows about all this stuff. You know, she did work in the gym. I don't know. I know. That's it. Bring it up slowly like that and then feel the pull on the muscles there. That's <laughs> it, yeah. Hey, Jack, you can settle an argument for us. Oh. Hang on a minute, you. Just a second. Do you like your fellas soft and cuddly, or do you prefer the Mr. Universe type? <laughs> I bet you do, don't you? I bet you're a uh, rippling muscles and glistening oil girl, aren't you? Yeah, I'm not bothered either way. I'm off men full stock. Yeah. I was just passing. <laughs> just passing? Yeah. Half to eleven, and you're just passing. Well, no. I thought you were brilliant tonight. Oh, you were just passing, and you just passed right into the theatre and saw the show. I've seen it three times. I think you're brilliant. Oh, thanks. Uh, can I walk you home? Oh, six and a half miles. I think I'd rather catch the bus. Yeah, that's what I meant. I meant, can I catch the bus with you? Well, actually, yeah. Uh... Well, do you want to get a burger? I mean, you can go to McDonald's. I've got some money here. I've eaten already. Oh, right. I knew I've told you I'm on a diet. <sighs> What's the matter? I forgot about that. I bought you these. Oh, Lee, no. You can't go spending your money on me. Well, I wanted to get you something. <sighs> All right. Just this once. Thanks very much. Come on. I'm trying to get you the ten past. Ooh. You go up, love. Uh, I think I'll get a bath. Are you going up now? Yeah. I might just right wait for your dad to come in. OK, to use the bathroom then. Yeah. <sighs> oh, where the hell is he this time? Home safely, no bullet wounds, no smashed kneecaps. It's all black, that Davy fella. I reckon he'll be back tomorrow. Trying to make terms. What does he call himself? Big Davy. <sighs> That's bluff for the stars. He's all a five foot two. <laughs> With like massive Cuban heels on. Yeah, and his hair blow dry. <laughs> Big Davy. Nothing big about him, skinny little runt. Uh oh. No, don't shut it. You were Casey. Please, let me come in just for a minute. It's not fair, this, Jack. Don't judge me till you know the whole story. Hello. Hello. What are you still doing up? Worrying myself sick! You lied to me. I didn't lie to you. I just... I didn't want you to know. No, I bet you didn't. It screwed up my life before that stuff. I was scared it was going to screw it up again. I'm trying to get off it, Jackie. I'm fighting it. Yeah, it didn't look like you were fighting too hard last night. So what do I do now, Shane? Do I go for an AIDS test? Do I start worrying about hepatitis B? You don't have to worry about anything like that. I have never shared a needle in my life. Yeah, you say that. How do I know that you tell me the truth? I... How do you know that you tell me the truth? You could have done anything when you were high. I give you my word. What else can I do? You're just going to have to trust me. Look, Shane, this is a waste of time. I can't cope with drugs. Anything else, but not drugs. God, you're a hypocrite, aren't you? All that garbage you spout at that anti-drugs campaign last week. It's all true, though. I hate drugs. Oh, well, then. That explains why you're shooting up heroin. <sighs> Forget it, Shane. So that's it, then? Yeah, that's it. Right, well, if you change your mind. You don't know about our Tony, do you? Who's Tony? My brother. I thought Mike was your brother. Yeah, he is. But I another one. Younger than me. <laughs> He's just a kid still. It was drugs that killed him. He was in a coma for months. 
Your brother was on drugs. No, oh no. I'm telling this all wrong. He wasn't on drugs. The guy who killed him was on drugs. Your fan, Jimmy Corkill. Jimmy Corkill killed your brother? Yeah. He was high on smack when he was driving. And he smashed into the cartoon he was in. Casey's dad was killed as well. And the really bad thing is that I never really got to know him. He was just little Tony. Just a pain, really. He'd be 17 now. He'd be into college and bands. Be amazing. Well, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay because I know what drugs can do. The bit I like best is when you do that rock number in the giant's castle, that dance where you're all in the black leathers and stuff. I think you look dead slinky. You're really on a diet. Yeah. We look real the way you are. I mean, well, I think you do. I think you got a perfect figure. Are you going home for them chocolates now? Oh, uh, no, no. Actually, I'm not eating chocolates at the moment. No sweets, no cakes, nothing like that. I knew I should have got you something else. I was going to get you some perfume, but I didn't know which ones you liked. There's so many in the shops, and it's dead expensive. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the thought that counts. Well, I think about you a lot. All the time. Luckily, I don't think... What happened to that stupid bus? It's too quick. One minute I was just an ordinary kid with zits, usual stuff. School, trouble with the parents, music, all that. The next thing I'm plastered over every magazine in the world like I'm some kind of phenomenon. You don't know what that's like. You lose your bearings. And when you try to tell people you can't cope with what's happening to you, they get nasty like, oh yeah, fame, money, girls throwing themselves at you, must be really tough, poor old you, eh? My heart bleeds. But it is tough. It is when you're only 18. You believe everything you read about yourself. You start to think you're as wonderful as they say. But there's nobody to tell you the truth. Nobody to trust. So I started taking amphetamines because they made me feel like I was coping. Then it was coke. And then heroin. That's why I left Sunset Bay. The official line was, I left because I was going to make a record. I had a film lined up. But it wasn't true. They fired me. But I thought... Oh, I was very discreet, you know, nothing in the papers. I went into a clinic over here and in a couple of months I was off the stuff. Honestly. Which is why I know I can do it, Jackie. It's just... When the pressure gets to me, I... I'm just so bloody sick of being Greg Brady. And if I'm not Greg Brady, then who the hell am I? Don't you give me the push as well, Jack. You've got to help me, please. Or I'm just going to get in deeper and deeper. I can't. I can't. I know I can kick it. But it doesn't have to be me, does it? You need professional help. I need you as well. I need you more. You are the only person apart from me, Mum, who thinks of me as Shane. As a real person, instead of some brainless piece of Aussie meat they can buy and sell and do big bucks showbiz deals over. Don't kick me out, Jack. Please, let me stay. Bathroom's free. Oh, night, love. Oh, Just going to do my teeth. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> night, Dad. Night, night, love. Hey, listen, thanks for being so, you know. I'm just glad there's someone in the world who loves you as much as you love him. He's a good lad. Jimmy, put this lantern light off when you're finished. All right. Hey, you put that cat out. In this weather, what do you think I am? 